hello everyone so welcome to the video for the capacitors so let us begin with a few basic topics and understand it and then move on to the three questions that i have taken for the video so the capacitance is given by charge upon potential so you are comfortable with these formulas the energy is given by half cv square and which can be converted into two other forms by replacing the value of c from here or by replacing the value of v from here and getting two different more answers okay and the important thing which you must know is that whenever the capacitors are connected in series then what is the equivalent capacitance the equivalent capacitance is given by 1 by c equivalent which will be equal to 1 by c1 plus 1 by c2 plus 1 by c3 plus 1 by c and that is we have n number of capacitors so since this is a revision series so i am not fo focusing much on the theory but if you would have seen my previous videos i generally focus on the whole chapter but this is the revision series so we should focus on the more important questions so these are the parallel ones so c equivalent will be c1 plus c2 plus c3 till c n so now let us begin with the first question for the video so we need to find the resultant capacitance for the following cases first of all let me take the first case only where this these are the plates which are to be taken into consideration and it is attached to some potential v we have the plate area to be a as given and the separation between the two plates is given to be d so this separation is given as d so this is the dielectric slab number 1 which is inserted till the wall given here which has the dielectric constant k1 and the dielectric constant for the play, uh, slab number 2 is said to be k2 so we need to find the resultant capacitance for the following case so the formula which you must be familiar with is that the uh, c that is the capacitance is given by epsilon not a by d okay so now we shall be using this formula here so let us deal for the first one first you need to decide whether these two capacitors that is the first capacitor here and the second capacitor here are in series or they are in parallel so these are the plates which are to be taken into consideration so this will be at some potential and this will be at some potential you can see that the potential will be same for both the capacitors because they are connected between the same plates so the potential is same it implies that they are in what they are in parallel so the plates are in parallel so what is the formula for the equivalent c when the plates are in parallel that is c equivalent is equal to uh, 1 by c uh, sorry c equivalent is equal to c1 plus c2 because uh, it is just opposite of resistance type thing that to take into consideration so we need to find the c equivalent which will be equal to c1 so c1 is this one so we need to take for it so we need to take the epsilon for this medium 1 that is epsilon for medium 1 into a what will be the a of this thing if this thing hole this whole slab has an area a so this is the half of that thing that is it is elongated only to this part okay so the area of this slab will be a by 2 of the total plate area if the total plate area is a then this has the width half of that so it will have area a by 2 upon d what is the separation between these two that is d so that is d plus epsilon not epsilon for the medium 2 into what will be the area for the other plate if you see very carefully it again has the area a by 2 so into a by 2 upon the separation that is d okay what is the epsilon for the medium 1 if you remember from the basic electrostatics that epsilon upon epsilon not is equal to the k so what is the k for here the k is k1 so epsilon for medium 1 will be equal to k1 into epsilon not so replace that here so what i'll be getting is c equivalent is equal to k1 into epsilon not k1 into epsilon not into a by 2 upon d plus e of medium 2 will be by using the same phenomena we'll get k2 into epsilon not into a by 2 upon d so the c equivalent comes out to be taking epsilon not a by 2d common into k1 plus k2 
so this is the easy question that i'm beginning with so that the people who are preparing for mains are also well prepared now let's move on to the second part for this question i hope that this question is clear let us do the second part so you can see that the separation is l whereas this is the dielectric slab number one till this boundary the dielectric slab number two for this boundary the dielectric slab for this boundary all these three are identical uh, their figure is not to scale these are identical that is the separation for here will be l by 3 similarly for here it will be l by 3 and for here it will be l by 3 now these are connected in series and not in parallel because the potential is not same across them so for series we know that 1 by c equivalent will be equal to 1 by c1 plus 1 by c2 plus 1 by c3 so 1 by c equivalent will be equal to 1 by k epsilon naught so first of all the first one that is the k1 epsilon naught what is the area for this the area for this plate will be what think it very properly that will be only a because the area will remain same this length is only changing the plate area is remaining same for the things upon the separation between these two plates is what l by 3 so l by 3 plus 1 by c2 now for c2 we have k2 so k2 into epsilon into area what is the area area is a once again upon l by 3 that is the separation between the plates now for the third one 1 by k3 epsilon a by l by 3 so now let us take uh, 3 common l by 3 to above so what i'll be getting is 1 by c equivalent let us take out the common things that is 1 by epsilon a can be taken out above we have now it becomes 3 l can also be taken out and we get 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 plus 1 by k3 okay so we can manipulate it further to get the further answer so this is the basically the final correct answer for the c equivalent so i've taken two examples here the first one for the parallel one the second one for the series one in order to show you that how the difference occurs now if you see very carefully for the je 2015 2016 papers the questions have been very easy for this chapter so even if you're solving these type of question with dielectrics you have a better chance of gaining much marks in this chapter so let us move on to the second question now so this is a mixture of uh, Wheatstone bridge type questions and we need to find the equivalent capacitance of the following system indicated between the following points. So these are the two points which are taken into consideration or the all the values of these capacitances that is 2, 4, 6, 8 and whatever values are mentioned mathematical values they are in uh, mu f that is what microfaraday's or basically it is taken into microfaraday's because capacitance can be a very large unit that is a faraday is a very large unit for a particular capacitor so let us begin with it that how to solve it so we can see that what is the wheatstone bridge first of all see we have to multiply 2 into 8 that is what 16 4 into 4 that is 16 so whenever these two multiplications are same then the middle one can be removed this you must have studied in your class 12th boards also and j also so this can be removed because this is short circuited and no current passes through it so basically it is of no use to us if no current passes through it so it is removed similarly if you do for this one let us solve for this one now 4 into 8 32 8 into 4 32 so once again this forms the same wheatstone bridge so this can once again be removed because it is of no use to us now let us do for it 4 into 4 8 into 2 so once again 16 and 16 so this can be removed so we have removed this thing so the circuit becomes free of this stuff and the circuit only remains as such so we can see that when current passes through here it will go through here go through here go through here and from here it will not pass through this wire so what i mean to say here is that you can see now this capacitor and this capacitor are in series why because the same current passes through it so let us solve the question now so these are in series so what will happen is that 1 by c equivalent will be equal to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 so 1 by c is equal to 6 by 8 so that is c implies 4 by 3 so this thing can be replaced by a capacitor of uh, capacitance which has 4 by 3 mu f so as simple as that you don't need to think very hard you need to think smart that how the wires can be removed so that we can get a proper answer let us do for the second one 
so once again this is what this is in series so what i'll be getting is 1 by c equivalent is equal to 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 so 1 by c becomes 8 plus 4 12 upon 32 so c becomes 16 upon 6 that is 8 upon 3 so this is 8 by 3 for this one so it becomes 8 by 3 micro faraday again for the next one it will be 8 by 3 because these are same as this so 8 by 3 microfaradays so this is 4 and 2 so it will become 4 by 3 microfaradays so very important thing now once again this is what these are these all capacitors are applied between the same potential difference that is maintained throughout so these are what these are in parallel so now these are in parallel so what is the c equivalent for the parallel that is c1 plus c2 plus c3 plus c4 so that is 4 by 3 plus 8 by 3 plus 8 by 3 plus 4 by 3 now let us add all of these 12 12 24 that is 24 by 3 so c equivalent comes out to be 8 micro faraday for the above system okay so this is how you solve the particular system in order to get the final correct answer you have to remove this because these are forming the weedstone bridge so these type of questions are very much favorite for j mains or aims or etc level examinations because uh, these are short type nature and moreover these uh, have to use a particular concept in order to solve them so now let us solve the next question for the video we have been given a diagram where the width of each plate is B. So width of each plate is V, B and we have the capacitor whose plates are rigidly clamped and connected to a battery of EMF E. So this battery has an EMF E, the distance is D. So uh, all the surfaces are frictionless in nature and we have that uh, the mass of value M is given and we need to calculate that what is the uh, Mass m the value of mass m for which the dielectric slab stays in equilibrium that is this dielectric slab so this is the setup given the length is l the thickness is b for this plate so let us see that how we can solve such type of questions so first of all let me take that this block that is the k dielectric slab k which has been given to us is inserted to a distance x in this uh, in between these two plates so what will be this distance that is this distance remaining that will be l minus x Dile dielectric constant for this is k what is the medium inside the medium is taken to be air okay so let us see the further thing now let us see that how the force will be applied on this dielectric slab see here is the potential that is potential e that is taken for the uh, battery that we have taken so this goes along here giving me the positive positive charges here and this goes along here to give me the negative 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 charges on the outside of the plate now these positive charges will tend to induce the negative charge inside here because we all know that from the basic electrostatics the negative charges here will try to induce the positive charges here so what actually happens is that these negative charges try these negative and positive charges try to attract this dielectric slab inside the uh, inside these two plates by the force f so this is the reason why the force comes into consideration and the force is inward in nature that it attracts the dielectric slab towards it okay so now we need to consider that the medium here is air which is obviously uh, you all know that and we have the dielectric constant k so let us take two capacitors here the f this is the first capacitor that i am taking this blue marked here that is inside empty space is taken to be the capacitor number one so c1 and the outside till here is taken to be the capacitor number two because the capacitor has to remain in between the plates so the first capacitor is taken to be the capacitor which is made of air the second one is taken to be this remaining area so these are connected in what these are connected in uh, parallel because these two capacitors are applied the same potential difference throughout whenever they are taken into consideration so the c equivalent will be what c1 plus c2 so c equivalent will be what is the for the air here we have epsilon naught what is the area of this thing that is taken into consideration area is what length length is what l minus x what is the breadth the breadth of the thickness of this thing is b as mentioned in the question 
the width of each plate is b so a e epsilon naught into a upon d what is the separation between the plates that are taken here that is d already mentioned plus what is the c2 which is given here c2 you need to find that is k into epsilon naught into area what is the area for this thing that is the length is x what is the width the width is b upon d that is the separation which is given okay so c equivalent will come out to be let's take out the common things from here epsilon naught b upon d can be taken out giving me inside l minus x plus k x so this is the c equivalent which is required for the given system uh, so now we need to find that what is the force applied here before that we need to find the energy inside it so what is the energy stored inside a capacitor energy is equal to half cv square as i discussed in the beginning of the video so half into c is this epsilon naught b upon d into l plus x x is taken common k minus 1 into v square what is the potential that is applied here that is e so the potential here is e that is e square so this is the energy now we need to find the force here by because we need to calculate the mass m for which the dielectric is in equilibrium so what are the forces which are acting on this dielectric if you see this dielectric very carefully let me draw here the force which is acting here is f and the force which acts here is t so if f is equal to t then we have the dielectric to be in equilibrium so we need to find the force here force is modulus of du by d x that is the gradient of potential energy so here it will become what that is uh, d by dx of this e that is e so that will be equal to these are constant with respect to x so these can be taken out of integration so half epsilon naught b into e square upon d integration of l will be zero it is a constant integration of x will be one so we get k minus one so force will come out to be for any possible case whichever you take in the capacitors it comes out to be epsilon naught uh, one by two epsilon naught b e square upon d into k minus one you can see that the force is a constant see it does not depend on x it does not depend on x anywhere so whatever the length of this thing whichever the length is it is inserted inside the capacitor the force will remain a constant no matter what so this is very important data so now let us use it in the question so this is the force on the dielectric slab so we have the dielectric slab here the force f is here and the tension t is here now let's draw the free body diagram for the mass m the mass m was hanging with the tension t and mg will be here these two will be equivalent to each other because it is in equilibrium so t will be equal to mg so here we have t is equal to mg so for this block to remain in equilibrium the simple which thing is known to you is that f will be equal to t so basically f will be equal to mg so f is what f is equal to half into epsilon naught b e square upon d into k minus 1 is equal to m g in the question it was asked that we need to find the mass m so mass m will be equal to 1 by 2 d g into epsilon naught b e square into k minus 1 so this is the mass m which comes out from this question so if there are any doubts in this video you can definitely ask me in the comment section and uh, best of luck to all of you and if there are any doubts any definitely ask me in the comment section because I shall reply to all of them. So this was regarding this chapter capacitors. So that's it. Thank you.